your time starts now you are on call you are any team has called you because uh, a patient age 23 presented with uh, history of uh, a snapping sound and sudden detumescence when he had sexual intercourse with his partner so, so what is happening what are they going to do um so my concern is that this patient um may develop a penile fracture um, and I'll therefore go and attempt to immediately because it's a urological emergency. Um, on arrival, I'm sure he's hemodynamically stable with Dr. Chris algorithm, and I'll then take a focused history to confirm the time of onset of um, these symptoms, uh, confirming the snapping sound and pain, um, the immediate detumescence, um, and whether there was any um, hematoma or swelling. Um, I'll ask if he's had any difficulty in voiding urine um, and has passed any blood pyurethrally. Um, and I'll then go on to perform a chaperone physical examination. Um, I'll notice basic observations. Um, I'll examine the external genitalia to look for the presence of um, hematoma, ten penile tenderness, um, whether there's a palpable defect, um, whether there is bruising extending into the perineum scrotum or into the lower abdominal inguinal regions um, and whether there is blood at the external urethral meatus. Um, I forgot to mention a further point in the history um, was the um, position, sexual position he was in, um, asking um, specifically about the reverse, if his partner was in a reverse cowgirl position. Okay, so explain what happens during the pineal fracture. What is the anatomical relation? Um, so in a fully erect penis, um, a penile fracture is usually due to the um, penis slipping out of the um, vagina um, and striking the uh, pubic bone or the perineum. Um, and the most likely location of a fracture in, is um, on the ventral aspect. It occurs in the tunica albuginea and it's on the ventral aspect uh, because this is where it's thinnest. Um, furthermore, um, it occurs during erection um, because the thickness of the tunica albuginea in the flatter state is two millimeters, um, whereas in the erect state, it's 0.25 millimeters. Okay, so which layer gets fractured? Is there any possibility of involvement of urethra? Um, so it is the tunica albuginea um, of the corpus cavernosum. It's tunica albuginea, which is fractured. Um, there is possibility for urethral involvement too, um, because um, this occurs mostly at the ventral aspect, and urethral involvement is present in up to 20% of cases. Okay, so this patient is um, otherwise comfortable. He's passing urine well. He gives a vague history of maybe one episode of blood tinged urine after the episode. Uh, he's quite young, fit, not on any medications, not known to have any past surgical illness also. So how are you going to explain to him the diagnosis? What investigations you want? Um, I'll explain to him that he's developed a penile fracture, um, which is a um, tear in the um, lining of the penis um, that um, permits erections. Um, I'll arrange for baseline investigations in the form of a full blood count um, and urea and electrolytes. Um, if I'm unable to palpate the defect, um, then I'll admit him and I will request a ultrasound scan of the penis to happen within the next 24 hours. Um, the other concern I have though is that he has a potential urethral um, injury, um, but I'll first want to locate the um, locate the um, where the defect is is present. So what type of the ultrasound the sonologists are going to use? Um, so they will um, they will request a Doppler ultrasound. Okay. Do you know about the frequency or the type of the probe which is used in this situation? Um, so the I can't recall the probe. Um, the frequency of the probe will be ten megahertz for the penis. Okay. So what findings you are trying to elicit in the ultrasound? Um, so I'm trying to elicit whether there is the presence of a tear within the tunica and also where the uh, location is um, to help um, to aid with planning for um, surgical um, exploration and repair. Okay. 
and um, let us assume you don't have the facility for the sonologist is there any investigations which can help you um, an MRI scan of the penis um, would also be an aid in determining the location of the defect. So what type of MRI, what will be the findings? Um, so it would be, um, MRI would not require gadolinium contrast and it does not require um, an interaction to be induced. Um, it, in terms of the findings, um, we'll be looking for a defect uh, within the um, corpus um, cavernosum and the location. Okay. And uh, your MRI proves presence of um, injury of the corpus uh, tunica albuginea and uh, you, the MRI proves presence of penile fracture. So what is your next step? So I'll inform the patient about the um, MRI findings, confirming a defect that needs surgical repair, um, and I will counsel him um, about undergoing a, a penile expiration and repair of penile fracture. Um, given that he had a uh, he's passed blood in the urine, and my suspicion um, of a urethral injury, I will also. Um, consent him to undergo a, a dynamic retrograde urethrogram um, plus or minus um, repair of urethral injury if discovered at the same time. Okay, take me through the steps, please. Um, so I'll ensure the patient is appropriately prepped, consented, and anesthetized uh, with a WHO checklist performed to include um, a VT and antibiotic prophylaxis. Um, I'll place the patient into a supine. Uh, position. Um, I'll first, I'll prep and drape the area. Um, I'll first perform a dynamic retrograde urethrogram uh, using a size 12 Foley catheter uh, with a balloon inflated um, in the nymphocular foster, no more than one mil, um, and I'll instill up to 120 mils of water soluble contrast with continuous fluoroscopic imaging. Um, I'll then um, perform, if the defects, can I just confirm where the defect is as well on the scan? Yeah, the scan showed that uh, the defect is on the right side of the tunica albuginea and um, extending up to 8 millimeters uh, in a circumferential manner. Is it proximal or distal? Mid, mid penile. Mid. Um, so given the location, um, my incision of choice will be a, a ventral penis scrotal incision. Um, I'll incise down to the uh, tunica albuginea. Um, I'll evacuate the hematoma and identify the defects. Um, I'll also inspect the urethra um, and for the repair, um, I'll form an irrigation and wash out with normal saline and I'll repair it with interrupted 2O PDS sutures with a knot buried. Um, and if there is a urethral injury as well, um, I'll perform a two layer closure over a catheter um, with 5O Vicryl. Um, I'll close the skin with a, a 4O Vicryl suture. I'll apply a compression bandage um, and I'll admit the patient overnight um, and ensure that clear postoperative instructions are documented. Other than the retrograde urethrogram, is there any way you can evaluate the urethra? Um, so this can be evaluated by direct visualization at the time of expiration. Um, a flexible cystoscopy um, in theatre can also be used to evaluate it. Okay. Which one you prefer, flexible cystoscopy or urethrogram? Um, in my practice, I prefer a urethrogram because this can help to uh, delineate both the distal and proximal um, extents um, of the injury, um, the length, and also um, the level of disruption. So whether it is uh, complete or partial, um, and whether there is any contrast um, flowing into the bladder. Okay. Any antibiotics needed for this penile fracture surgery? Um, prophylactic antibiotics um, are needed, um, and I will consult the local um, guidelines. However, my choice uh, would be um, comoxiclav to cover the skin um, and gentamicin to cover the uh, urinary tract as well. Okay. You are keeping this patient overnight. What is your advice next day? Um, I'll advise the patient that they need to avoid uh, sexual intercourse for at least um, six weeks. 
um, and that they'll be reviewed in clinic um, by myself um, in two weeks. Um, I will advise them about the potential longer term um, sequelae um, with a very small risk of erectile dysfunction, um, but that this will be due to the fracture, most likely due to the fracture itself and not um, the surgery, and also risk of um, corporeal fibrosis causing curvature, again, um, mostly due to the fracture. Okay. Okay, we'll stop it now. Good. Again, uh, nice presentation. Uh, no concerns. Um, I will keep flexible cystoscopy quite equal to retrograde urethrogram because of the cumbersome okay. of arranging the retrograde. We need a C arm, and uh, sometimes if you have to properly document, you need a proper X ray plate. Nowadays, we don't get the theater trolley or theater table with a if capacity to keep the extra play x-ray plate um, nothing wrong in retrograde urethrogram but uh, as a urologist you may be more confident in flexi and uh, in case if there is a partial uh, injury you can use a guide wire and try to pass the narrowing and you can put a catheter also which may sometimes enough while retrograde urethrogram will tell only uh, the diagnostic part of it if there is a small narrowing or if there is a uh, suspicion, then again you need to do the flexi anyway. Uh, and if there is a small bruise or something, the catheter itself will help you, isn't it? Uh, for the healing, unless if there is a definite uh, injury, you need to do a proper repair. So I will keep flexible stroscopy as an equally good choice. Um, so keep that in mind based upon how the examiner plays on the day, you should be able to make yourself a bit flexible in that. Okay.